Uh, welcome to Suyan Ranch. My name's Archie Vosboy. I'm the manager here. Um, I've been here for six years now. Suyan is a 44,000 acre conservancy in, in Laikipia West. We have, we have a large scale cattle operation in, um, on the conservancy. Uh, we run about 3,000 head of our own cattle. Um, we have 600 head of cattle that, um, that belong to a cooperative that we've set up buying and selling beef. Um, and those are primarily trading animals that we buy from the, from the communities in dry times like this. Um, and the reason we're doing that is providing the communities with an offtake, offtake, of, or an, an offtake for their animals. In dry times like this, it's very difficult for them to pr produce finished, and pro uh, finished beef that can go straight to slaughter. So what we do is we buy those animals, we fatten them on the conservancy, and then we sell them, and then we sell them. And so, so it's, a, it's an offtake for the communities, basically. Um, and then we also have about 800 head of community stock um, as well, situated on the conservancy. In dry times like this, we like to, we like to support our, our neighboring communities um, where we can. Um, so, so all these wild, all this livestock is run in conjunction with wildlife. Um, we're very, we're very wildlife, <laughs> very wildlife conscientious. Um, and you know, we, you know, these, um, you know, all the proceeds and the profits from these cattle will go directly back into the landscape and back into con conservation. Within the time that you've been here, what are the no notable changes you've experienced? You know, in my six years here, we've, what, we've, what, you, what I've realised is that droughts come. Every year we have droughts or dry times and every, we have good years and we have bad years. Um, you know, and you know, there's nothing we can do to change that, but the way we manage the landscape is very important on that front. Um, we, practice, uh, we practice holistic management of livestock here. So we, we, we're grazing areas as hard as we can for a period of time, but however, we let those pastures recover so that when we come around next year, we still, we have, we have, we have the grazing there. You know, we don't graze the whole place as hard as we can for as long as we can. We make sure there's areas in the conservancy where the grass is resting, thus ensuring there's, there's grazing for the livestock in the drought as well as wildlife. And we also have big water, water infrastructure here where we have, um, where we have boreholes so in dry times like this, when all the dams are dry and the rivers are all drying out, there's still water for both the livestock and the, and the wildlife. Um, so, these, so these animals are pr primarily producing beef. Um, the steers from this herd, all the, all the bull calves from this herd will be, will be castrated at a month old and they'll, be direct in, they'll, they'll go directly into the beef market. Heifers, Heifers will either be used. The heifers born in these herds will either be used as re replacement animals in the in the herd. So what we do is we don't keep any of our breeding cows for, for longer than 10 years old. As soon as it gets to 10 years old, we sell that animal. That animal, when she gets to 10, she's generally had five or six calves. In those five or six calves, she's bred herself for replacement, as well as producing five other calves that we can now sell. So by the time she gets to that age, she's still she's still fit, strong. Then when she weans her calf in her 10th year. She's now still young and strong and can get fat and very quickly after we take that calf away, then we sell her. The steers will take three to th three and a half years to finish um, at the moment. Um, we're looking at ways of increasing, um, speeding that process up. But, um, but at the moment it's taking three and a half years. Um, these are all Baran cows. Um, the Baran cattle breed is a, very, is a very hardy animal, which is one of the main reasons why we have them. Um, you know, in dry conditions like this, you know, they're still putting on weight, still looking, they're still looking good. Um, and they're also very disease, resi disease resistant, um, which is one of their main, which is one of their main traits that we, 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 we enjoy. And the other trait is their, their herd ability. You know, they're born in herds and they grow up in herds and you can have one guy looking, over, looking after over 100 breeding cows and their calves and they all stick together and they're very manageable in that, in that sense. Conditions I said when they came is that they're not allowed to bring their own bulls. And what I've done is I've provided our own Baran genetics to put in those herds so that they bring their cows, we give them bulls while they're leasing grazing, 
and thus in turn we're putting better genetics back into the community livestock. We sold some steers this morning and they were averaged 85,000 bob each. So if you took the average, and we also bought some trading stock this morning, the average, the average price of the trading stock we bought was about 30,000 bob, 35,000 bob. So, you know, we need to encourage these guys to have better quality animals rather than more animals. You know, if that's basically, that's nearly a third of the price that we're getting for our animals. So if you could replace, reduce their animals by two thirds by, and increasing the value of their herds by two thirds, then we could help the communities by a making sure that they're using their grass more wisely instead of going for quality instead of numbers. So all this livestock on the conservancy, they obviously have to be locked away at night um, for predator, predator reasons. So that's the main way we, we get around the predator issue is we keep them in at night. And so they're grazing from seven in the morning till five in the, in the afternoon, which is, which is obviously not the most efficient way of producing beef, but it's the way it was. It's, it's how it's been, you know, how it works, and it's um, and it's been done for a long time. So the Baran is actually a, is actually an indigenous Kenyan breed that came from northwestern Kenya originally. That's been produced, which has been improved over the years with genetics to become more more of a commercially viable animal. So the the fact that these animals can be locked up for half the day and still produce good calves, still produce good weight, is one of the main reasons why we still have them. So that's how we get around the predator, predator um, instance. Wildlife, you know, the wildlife and the, and the livestock, you know, they get on very well. Um, you know, you'll see them grazing side by side very often. You see elephants and zebra and all those kind of animals grazing right next to the livestock. They're not, you know, and I think they're, they're used to it. You know, the livestock's used to the wildlife and the wildlife's used to the livestock. Um, so all the herds are herded every day with there's someone with the herds all day, every day, which means that the, you know, if the herd is grazing towards a herd of elephants that are grazing peacefully, then the, the herder can move them away and leave the animals in peace. Um, the other thing that's really that's really helping us with the with the conservation side running along livestock is the holistic management approach that we use. I mentioned earlier we're only using between 10 and 15 percent of the of the farm at any one time grazing grazing areas hard and then allowing for a maximum recovery time on those areas which means the other 85% of the farm will be used for livestock throughout the course of the year, but it also means the wildlife can be in those areas undisturbed while, while, while we're grazing. We have the livestock and the wildlife grazing on the same grasslands. How does that help the environment? Um, so the livestock actually help the environment hugely. Um, you know, if you, if, you go, if you just left this grass um, to, be, to be grazed by, by, you know, by the wildlife, it will never, and never be grazed down f flat, which, you know, this grass is all being grazed at the moment, but if you go to areas which we've grazed, we've grazed and finished the grass there. So when the rains come next year, those areas will all that grass will recover and it'll all be fresh, new rejuvenated grass. You know, we don't have any old, old grass that, that the animal that, that's oxidized and, is, and has gone moribund. That means that the livestock and the wildlife don't eat it. You know, in the Maasai Mara, we have the, we have the big migration of, of the wildebeest. You know, they come once a year and they graze the whole area flat and then they leave for a year. When the rains come, all that grass recovers, they come around again next year. But that ensures that grass is now young, fresh and full of nutrition and a lot more useful to both livestock and wildlife. Some places have experienced a lot of invasion weeds. Invasive weeds? No. That's one of the, you know, that's because one of our, you know, our rangeland is so healthy that, you know, because you know, we allow it time to recover, it means that the, the, the invasion of weeds can't, they struggle to get into the grass because the grass is, is again healthy. You know, the grass will get grazed completely flat. And when it rains next year, the grass, the roots is all there, the, the infrastructure is all there. So when it rains, the grass actually now drowns out the, the invasive plants. Um, so what's really important um, with, with, with managing livestock efficiency, efficiently is every single animal has to have an identification number. Therefore, you can judge the performance of that animal. If it's not performing well enough, i.e. having calves quick enough, then we'll, then we'll cull her. Um, we'll cull her and then also, um, and also you can also track the, track the, track the calves um, so you can tell who's, who their parents are on both sides. Um, all these animals, they're given a brand number like 47, 97 okay 
at calf, that, that, that number is given to them when they're born as a calf. And it's put in an ear tag, that ear tag, that number remains with them for life. So all the way through. So when we're weighing at all the animals, that number is what we, we, we judge its performance on. Um, and then you see those two calves there with the, with the ear tag. So those go in, those go in when it's um, at the beginning, at, when, they're at a, when they're a month old. And that remains their number for life. So on the Conservancy, we have, we have 24 herds. Um, each of these, each herd has, has either between one and a half and two, two herders on each herd. Um, so in this herd here, which is a herd of steers, we have three herders on, on a herd of two steers. Um, so that takes our total to just over, just over 50 herders that are employed on the farm. Eight months old, where they're taken away from their mothers. And then from that day they're weaned, our biggest goal is basically to get them to put on as much weight as, we, as, as they can as quick as possible. To get to around 400, 450, 500 kilos depending on the weather um, and which markets we're targeting. Um, the markets are very good at the moment for, for, for prime finished steers like this. We're getting about 185 shillings a kilo. Um, and if we're selling at sort of between 420 and 450 kilos um, a, a, an animal, that comes to just around 80,000 bob is basically what we target to sell an animal at. So these animals are all born in, in late 2019 and late 2018. There's a herd above this herd, which are the finished an, which are the finishing animals. So this is 160 animals in this herd. But then for the last stage, the last stage of finishing, we put them in a smaller herd of about 60 or 70 animals, which is a lot more easy to manage and they don't, and they graze a lot better and seem to put on weight better. Um, and like I said earlier, weight gains is, is, is key with these herds. So the calves, when they're taken from their mothers, this is the first herd they'll go into. Um, so they'll stay here for, they'll stay here for, for a number of months, um, depending on, on how many calves are coming through the system. Um, then from there, these are actually steers and young bulls. And they basically work their ways up through the, through the, through the so we've got three heifer herds, including a weeder herd. They work their way up through the, through the, through the herds until they get to this herd here, which is when they're about two and a half. Then we select them for breeding um, or, or sale there. Um, so we try and keep them, you know, so try and keep the age groups sort of coming through the system together. Um, and we bull, our, we bull our heifers twice a year now. Um, so so, the, for, so for, the, for the heifers that were born in the first half of 20, 2019, they were bulled back in July. Um, and then these will be now bulled in December. Then also, um, so what we also touched on is buying, buying, buying community stock, um, you know, and giving them an off, uh, giving them a market to sell their animals from, uh, to, um, you know, at the moment, you know, it's very difficult for them to sell fat finished animals that are, that, you know, are ready to go straight to, for slaughter. So what we do is we're providing them with a market to buy, to buying those animals and then and then and selling them through after they've been on the conservancy and been fin fattened and finished when was the last time you trained here um any significant rain no we haven't had any dam filling rain you know da rain enough rain that will fill up dams for nearly over a year now um but we've had enough rain to sort of keep the the, the grass um you know keep us grass keep the grass um you know in good condition um so the grass has grown in areas, but it, but it hasn't filled any dams. Um, so that's so that's our you know surface water is our biggest challenge at the moment. Um, but if we um, you know if we if we if you if you you know if you go around, it's, it looks like we've got lots of grass. But then that's because there's areas that we haven't grazed this year yet, because we've set them aside for for dry times. At the moment, we've got just over four thousand head. Yeah, including community livestock and then livestock that our cooperative has bought um, to off our communities. So 4,000 herds with, uh, you said herdsmen, how many? Herdsmen's about um, the 55 that are running our, our livestock and the community and the trading livestock, but the community, they herd their own livestock. So we just provide them with grazing and water and they manage their own livestock, but we manage where they graze. what we are talking about having the wildlife grazing on that side yeah, yeah. and the cows taking water here you know so here you can see 
You can see the wildlife in the background. This is another commercial herd that's, that's come in for water now. Um, so all this water is pumped out from a borehole. Um, and you know, one of the good things is, is you know, once all the, wild, all the livestock have watered, now there's still water here for, 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 the, light, for the wildlife. You know, the closest water to here now is the dam that's, I don't know, four, five kilometers over there. So, you know, it helps, you know, having the livestock in the, in the landscape helps hugely for that purpose as well. We're just going to show you how we, how we weigh and record all the, all the weight gains um, of the cattle when we weigh them every month. Um, so, this is a, so this is a Bluetooth reader. Every single, every single animal has a microchip inside its neck. Um, this is now connected to the weigh scale. Uh, this weigh scale sits on low bars um, and these talk to each other. Um, so what happens is, is the animal comes in like that. Um, so now you have its weight here, 487 kilos. I weigh that. This number is 8040. Um, so this, this is the number of the microchip. This is the number of the animal. Then the brand of the number of the animals on here, so you have 8040 here as well. And then here you have the then here you have the weight um, the weight of the animal. Here you have its number. Then here you have its daily gain. So from, since when it was last weighed, it's put on 590 grams um, a day since it was last weighed. And this not this has its own number. And then so when when the animal comes through here for the first time. We program the Bluetooth, the, the, the microchip reader and the weigh scale to recognize each one of these chips with the, with the number of the animal. So that's how we weigh our livestock. We do that every month mm -hmm. um, on the basis to make sure that our, uh, make sure the cattle are putting on weight. Um, you know, if you're seeing a dip somewhere, then you know, there might be a problem. You might be lack of, you know, the grazing might be not so good or, you know, they might have got a disease like foot and mouth or something like that. So we can react to it very quickly. Um, now, so the cattle are, they're all Bomid and temporary Bomas that can be moved around the conservancy um, for, for, for the idea of holistic grazing and not overgrazing areas of the conservancy. So we can put the cattle everywhere. So we're about to head there now to have a look at that. So, um, so this is this is our big hay barn uh, that we that we fill up whenever we can when the conditions are good and favorable and the grass is green and it dries off um, we'll come and we'll bale just the pla the grass from the from the on the plains um, we bring it back in here we can fit about thirty thousand bit we can fit about thirty thousand bales of hay in here um, and it's you know and it's a good and it's a good store storage of hay um, we. We, and then the idea is, is you know, we generally don't use it ourselves because we, because we're properly stocked and you know we we rarely run out of grazing. Um, but what we do is we we sell it to the communities to aid them in the, um, you know, aid them in the dry times um, with supplementary hay feeding. Um, so this is all just hay cut off the off the off the plains, and you know it's. It's very good, very nutritious, and a lot of people, you know, people come and buy this over Rhodes grass quite often. Um, so this is our, uh, you know, our way of helping the communities in another way without giving grazing, um, without leasing grazing when we can't. So you know, this hay was cut in 2019, um, and if you can see here, there's still a little bit of greenery in it. Um, it's probably quite hard to see, but this is a lot better than a nothing where nothing that they have in the community lands. And B, it's you know it's almost better than the grass that we have in our in on the on our pastures at the moment. It being so dry. Mm -hmm.